Namaskar. This is David Hawthorne at astralview.com. Today is the 16th of August, 2022. The following is the Vedic astrology reading for Anne Heche, based on the 25th of May, 1969, at 4.51 p.m. in Aurora, Ohio. I've also just added the uh, time zone, latitude, longitude, if we need that. Now, I'm just going to do a short reading on her chart, but I am going to use the systems approach to Vedic astrology paradigm for reading the chart. If you've been following my YouTube channel, then you know Systems Approach by now. We read the charts from the Ascendant or Rising sign. In this case, 25 degrees of Virgo. We say that for the Virgo rising sign, there are four planets that will never cause harm. And these four planets can and should be strengthened to add protective covering to life. These are Guru, Jupiter, that rules the fourth house, childhood, parents, property, fixed assets, domestic peace, conveyances or vehicles. Venus will never cause harm. It rules the second house of wealth, status, speech, and continuation of family life. Mercury will never cause harm. It rules the chart. It rules Virgo. It rules her name, fame, health, appearance, personality, reputation, longevity of life. And Chandra Moon will never cause harm. It rules the house of income and friendships and older siblings. But we do not strengthen the 6th, 8th, and 12th house rulers. These are Dustan Babas and auspicious houses. If they contain a multi cone sign, 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, or 11, then the ruler can cause adverse effects in life. In this case, her 6th house ruler, Saturn, can cause mental tension, stress, financial issues, health issues, conflicts, disputes, bankruptcy, divorce. We don't strengthen the eight, so no black gemstones for her or blue sapphires. We don't strengthen the eighth house ruler, Mars, so no red coral gemstone. And we don't strengthen the 12th house ruler, Sun. Sun is a malefic planet for Virgo. So no ruby gemstones. Now Jupiter in the first house connects parents and property and home life with herself. Jupiter is also connected with husband and children. Notice, however, that Jupiter is only about two degrees from Ketu, and it's under the seventh aspect of Rahu. So this causes highs and lows connected with property, happiness, childhood, parents. husband and children. Mars in Scorpio gives her a strong desire for independence and courage. Venus at 27 degrees is close to the rising sign degree, the most effective point. We have an orb it would start about, even if we only use a three-degree orbit, it would start at 22 and go up to 28. 
This is 27. So Venus is close to the most affecting points, and it's exalted. So it does bless the house of relationships, partnerships, joint ventures. And the seventh aspect is what gives her the good appearance and the appreciation for the fine arts, the performing arts, and the healing arts. So she ended up in, in uh, theater, entertainment. Saturn is badly placed in the eighth house of Dustan Baba, so it undermines the sixth house. So that causes stress, mental stress. It causes conflicts and disputes, misunderstandings. Litigation, bankruptcy, and divorce are all possible. Saturn is in its debilitation sign. That can cause worry and fear, impatience, and distrust of others. Mercury ruling your chart is in the house of good fortune, but it is combust and is opposite Mars. Mars is at 18 degrees. Mercury is at 16 degrees. If there are three degrees or less, the impact is severe. And Mars rules its eighth house, which is Rondra, transformations, vulnerability, setbacks, delays, obstructions, accidents, and death-like experiences. Come to Mercury. Mercury rules a chart. Rules her. And Moon becomes weak in the 12th house. It's the emotional state. Yes, it's a waxing moon. It's pulling away from the sun. Gives some public favor, but 12th house, Dustan Baba. So emotionally, yes, a lot of Pitta. This is a fire sign, sun, moon, and Leo. When her mind's made up, it's made up. A lot of very fiery emotions. Moon rules the 11th house of older siblings and is placed in the 12th house, which is losses, expenses, separations, and end of life. She had an older sister who died at the age of two months from a heart defect. She had, had an older brother, and Jupiter is also, by the way, older brothers, who died at the 18 of a car crash that she says was suspiciously like suicide. And she had an older sister who died at the age of 49 from brain cancer. And her fourth sibling, she was pretty much estranged from. Now, she's estranged from her sister because her sister does not believe what Anne had to say about her father. She said her father abused her, abused her sexually abused her from a very young age. She's also estranged from her own mother, Moon's mother in the 12th house, who didn't believe her as well. And her mother is very much involved as a, I think she's a Christian therapist. Fourth house is parents, ruled by Jupiter, which is afflicted by Rahu and Ketu. So the Ketu influence in Jupiter. Fourth house is also mother, gives mother a spiritual path. The Rahu influence on Jupiter ruling the fourth house of parents gave her father some serious problems. I think he actually died from HIV and AIDS. So apparently he had a secret sexual life. So Anne was very vulnerable, went through a lot of challenges in life. I think when she was quite young, maybe 10 or 12 years old or something, she ended up working in entertainment to help put food on the table. So she was kind of forced into that whole situation. And she's had, she's been very vulnerable, gone through a lot of transformations because of the Mars influence on Mercury. This is their most malefic planet for Virgo. The seventh aspect is right on 
Mercury. She claimed she was also sexually harassed or abused by a number of people in Hollywood, like Harvey Weinstein. Rahu and Ketu do bother Jupiter, but no other houses, signs, or planets. So let's take a look at what happened here recently. So she goes into her Jupiter period in 2010. It runs for 16 years until May 2026. Is Jupiter favorable? Yes, it rules happiness, property, home life. But it's afflicted by Rahu and Ketu. By the way, this is the house of relationships. So she's got Venus and Rahu's there, planet of desires. But um, even though she had a, a marriage or two, she also was with another woman, Ellen DeGeneres, for a number of years. Famous actress, famous entertainer, comedian. But last September, she went into Moon. And Moon's in the 12th house. Losses, expenses, separation, and end of life. Now, I think what happened is that she came under a lot of stress with Rahu. Take this Rahu at 23 degrees in Aries. Slide him over here. He's sitting right here in her transit chart. Rahu goes an aspect five, seven, and nine houses away. So Moon is her operating planet, and it came under this affliction of Rahu. But let me show you that when this happens and it has some duration to it, it's not good. It's, it's quite challenging. Now, Rahu and Ketu always travel retrograde. So they enter a house at 30 degrees. They travel backwards for 18 months. They exit at zero degrees. During those 18 months, they will pick a particular degree and go stationary for up to three months at a time. And if that happens on your rising sign degree in any house, this most effective point is applicable to all 12 houses. Or if they stop in one of your planets by conjunction or aspect, it is quite challenging. So you can see Ra at 23 degrees is close to her ascendant degree. So it's causing trouble in the eighth house of accidents and death-like experiences. And its fifth, seventh, and ninth aspects are also causing trouble. Hospitalization, end of life, discontinuation of family life, and Rahu's unexpected calamities in the fourth house's property, home life, and vehicles. So she slammed her vehicle into a home, and everything burst into flames. Mars, fire on Mercury. But the reason this happened is because of a long-lived transit affliction. That's what causes the major issue. So this is her horoscope. This inner circle is the exact same horoscope. It's just a circular format. This allows us to lay the transits, overlay the transits. So we can see there's three ways to look at transits. Transit planets impact natal planets. Natal planets impact transit planets. And transit planets impact each other. See, recently this Rahu, Rahu Mars, if you recall the last few weeks, has been really difficult for heat waves, property, fires, floods, earthquakes. There was even a volcano, I think, in Japan. So this is Mars, property, going over Rahu, unexpected 
extreme sudden issues. This goes back into July. So for a few weeks there, it was really touch and go. Fires in France, fires in California, Washington, Oregon, whatever. It's terrible. But what I want to point out here is that if we use the 5 degree orb, so that's about 0 up to 30, and when Ra and K2 are within that 5 degrees, it's not good. So this Rahu in Aries, this is Rahu here in Aries at 29 degrees, sitting down here, throws an aspect five houses away. So it starts to pound on moon, the emotional state, and friendships. Around March 19th, it was, the problem was that by the end of the month is when Rahu and Ketu went stationary at 28 degrees. And that is going to be prolonged, long-lived stress. So 28 degrees, it's afflicting moon at 26 degrees, and it's afflicting the ascendant. You can round that off to 26. And if Ra was operating, so is K2. So they were afflicting. When they're in odd signs, because they throw an aspect five, seven, and nine houses away, they can reach out and touch any planets in the transit chart or in the birth chart in odd signs during those 18 month period. So this is the end of March, 28 degrees. If this was short lived, it's manageable. Anybody can take a three day fever, but you can't take a three month fever. So this is 28 degrees. So one week, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 weeks before they even moved. And when they moved, they moved closer to 25, 26 degrees and closer to 26, 27 degrees here. So this rock was just pounding, just pounding on moon, emotional state. The heart value. And then it's June 16th. So from end of March through the middle of June, very slow moving and stress. 27 degrees for a few weeks then. July 7, 26 degrees, that's 100% affliction here, pretty much 100% affliction here. So the impact is in the house they occupy and the houses they aspect. July 21st, 25 degrees. So I just say that she was under a prolonged stress of Rahu on her moon and Rahu and Ketu on her most effective point. So here's August 5th. This is the day that she had her car crash. 24 degrees, still close here, still close here. Here, Mars, ruling the eighth house of accidents and death-like experiences, at 27 degrees on the most effective point, conjunct Rahu. So this was an accident waiting to happen. And Rahu sitting here in Aries throws an aspect four, seven, and eight houses away. So it was afflicting the second house of continuation of family life because discontinuation of family life relative to an accident. And it was afflicting this Mars ruling accidents and death-like experiences. Yes, planets can afflict themselves. If it's a functional malefic planet, it can afflict itself by conjunction or aspect.
Where was Mercury ruling her chart on August 5th? 12th house. Hospitalization, losses, expenses, separation, end of life. This wasn't going to be much relief anyway here. January 2023, she goes into Mars subtree. And then the Rog subtree. That's not that's not much relief. Then she goes into 19 years of Saturn, a functional malefic planet for her debilitated and badly placed. So it's okay. And she finished her karma. She did uh, very good karma with donating her organs. So they've now been dispersed and they finally uh, declared her, they finally took her off life support on the 14th. Moon going into over Rahu. This Mars in the ninth house of Taurus, at two degrees under the ninth aspect of K2, four degrees. So my heart goes out to her and her family and friends, loved ones. But I do think that this is also a case of if people know what is going on in their horoscopes and they do the planetary remedies for their horoscopes, then they have some protection. So someone should have said, you are in a Jupiter Mahadasha for 16 years. You need to wear a yellow sapphire. You need to pacify Rahu and Ketu with Bhuta Yagya and Deva Yagya, charities and chants. We just have to be awake. We just have to be mindful. But I feel badly for her because you can tell there's a lot of afflictions in her life from the beginning. Trouble from her father, loss of older siblings, estranged from mother, estranged from sister. Relationships didn't work so well. Debilitated badly plays Saturn. Weak, badly placed moon, afflicted Rahu and Ketu on Jupiter, afflicted Mercury under Mars. Okay, I just wanted to give a few points on her chart.